disappointing. Even though we have all of the uh, viruses attacking and it seems to be viruses that are coming out of nowhere, the monkey virus. And I mean, Lord have mercy. But our great prophet told us that the judgments were not uh, finished as of yet. So we know that means more prayer, uh, more binding up to for us, girding up in prayer and staying in the fight. So I admonish you on this morning before our great pastor comes, Pastor Mark White, that you search your heart and that you open it up, that you may receive what God has to say today. And then after receiving it, the most important part is that you act upon the word of God that the man shall deliver to us on today. We want you to know that we're coming to you from 2131 Pine Street, Wyandotte, Michigan, Zion Worship Center. We are on your social media sites, Zion Worship Center, uh, Jeanette Williams-White, any of those, Pastor Mark White, you can find us. And when you go to the YouTube channel, we want you to click and subscribe. Uh, we've been preaching series, and you can follow the series on faith, the evolution of faith in your daily walk. Now, don't just look at it. Oh, that was a good message. No, no, no. It's more than that. We're trying to impact lives so that your walk with God will change. We want you to know that we are prepared to re-enter our building. Uh, our pastors being those of science people, every time they say, okay, this look, look like the, the Sunday to go, I get a call saying, no, hold on. You know, because they get information that we as lay people do not get get. But I want to say to you, please be careful. People are dying. Babies are getting sick. The horses are sick and, and the chickens are sick. You talking about plagues and the time of Moses. If you don't remember anything else, you remember those 10 judgments and that's what they were. And that's what we're in came up on Egypt. And so we are in a fight. You know, God will do what he needs to do to get us back in place and in order. Because he wished that no man be lost, uh, that we all be saved. That's his desire. Even though it doesn't appear that that's what our desire is, that is his desire. But we do want to give honor to Bishop S.J. Hyman, who is our presider, uh, to our pastors and their diligent work. Oh my God, pastors, uh, the work that they do and the labor that they do. And to all of the elders of Zion in good standing and the ministers that are in good standing uh, in Zion, the mothers, Mother Nettie, uh, Mother Wesley, Mother Rona, Prophet Mother Rona, all of those uh, servants of the Lord, I do honor you and I pray for you in your diligent work. And I thank God for you. It's nothing like having people who are obedient to God. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm a touch because I was put up here to introduce our great pastor, a man who is educated, who studies the word, who fast and pray for us. We're going to introduce to you, and we're not forgetting his, his wonderful wife, Pastor Valerie, and she works with the children, and they are on their way. They ask us for money. Uh, so I'm like, okay, here we go. Here we go. We know they back in action. They asking for money to go do stuff. But we don't want to forget also our prayer warrior. We have prayer on Tuesday night, and I mean, it's on the telephone, and and we see God. So you tune in uh, just to be a part of the prayer, to be in the presence of prayer and prayer that God answers. So Tuesday night, you tune in with us. We go to church now more than we did prior to the pandemic, except for when I was a kid. We went to church 30 days, you know, a month. We'd be in church every day. So uh, Mother Nettie remember that. 
<laughs> she with me. We was in church every day. So, but the Lord is yet good. And we want you to know that Zion Worship Center loves you. And we are praying for you. You don't have to necessarily be a member, if you would, of this particular locale. We are praying for you because you are part of God's army. You are part of his people. And we're praying for all of his people everywhere because the earth is the Lord's. Yeah. Yeah, I feel my help this morning. Uh, and so we're going to present to you none other than our beloved son and pastor, Pastor Mark White. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. <laughs> blessings and blessings to you all and to our internet family. God bless you out there. And to those that are in the Zoom church, God bless you. We love you and we honor you all. Uh, to our presiding bishop, uh, S.J. Hyman, uh, we bless her uh, and we're praying for her as she's out on the road and preaching. Uh, my God, our own bishop, uh, designee uh, Jeanette Williams, why God bless you, mom. Uh, we honor you and to all the ministers and, and uh, the, uh, the elders of the house, the mothers of the house, those that serve and those that love God, we thank you all for tuning in and to my, uh, my, my precious girlfriend, my boo, my, my Valentine as uh, Pastor Val. God bless you. I love you. And uh, we pray today that the word of God meets you where uh, you are. Uh, as we come today, I ask that you would release prayers in the atmosphere for me. I've been fighting in my body this week, but God is good. He's an awesome God. He's a healer and we move as he moves. I always tell him, I won't move unless you move. I won't speak until you speak. And so here today, God has us before you all. And so let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh Lord, I ask that you would increase and that I decrease. Let me be the vessel that you work through. God, today speak to your people, wherever they are, in the valley speak to them. God, wherever they if they're on the mountain top, speak to them. Wherever they are, God, whatever situation they're in, send the word to them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Those that need healing, those that need deliverance, those that have mental stress, God, meet the need today in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Uh, amen. Can we say amen? Amen. I just want to come to you shortly and talk to you about your presentation of um, our lives as living sacrifices to God. Um, in Romans 12, uh, 1 and 2, a very familiar scripture Paul brings to us, the Apostle Paul, and he says, I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, he urges them that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Come on, say that with me. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable worship or service. Now, number two, be careful. It says, now, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can we say amen to the word of God? Amen. And I, as I cross uh, referenced and looked at uh, sacrifices that uh, were given to God from all the way from Genesis, all the way uh, through the Bible, one of the things that stood out was, um, I believe it is 2 Samuel uh, chapter 24, verse 24, where um, King David says to Aruna, uh, who gives him, uh, David goes up to give a sacrifice to God because he has sinned and the uh, judgments have fell on Israel. And he, uh, Aruna says, well, here, this is all that you have. He gives him the mountain. He says, no. He says, I will not uh, render a sacrifice that does not cost me nothing. It must cost. So I come to you today to 
talk to you concerning your sacrifice to God comes with a cost. My God, your sacrifice to God comes with a cost. Sacrifice, metaphorically, is the service unto God, the obedience or the praise offered to God in an offering. This awesome principle that we see in Scripture uh, throughout the Bible is notable so that we understand that everything we sacrifice to God has a cost. Uh, if you do not pay a cost for it, then it is not your sacrifice. It is not your offering. Whoever gave it to you, if they gave it to you, it had to come with a cost. Uh, we can look throughout the Bible and see the cost that was paid to do the will of God in this earth. Abraham, who first named Abram uh, until he understands covenant with God, and God changes his name to Abraham. Uh, to get up uh, and leave his family, it cost him uh, to obey God that he would become the father of many nations. Uh, the prophets of the Old Testament, it cost them. It cost them their lives. They were hung and beheaded. Uh, they were uh, crucified. They uh, were, were tormented and tortured. Uh, it was John the Baptist. Baptist, if you follow uh, uh, his life for speaking the righteousness and truth to the king, uh, his head, he was beheaded. Uh, it cost Jesus everything on the cross, uh, that, he that he was crucified for the kingdom of God. As I grew up, uh, I watched my parents, uh, uh, the sacrifice that it cost them uh, to raise us in the ammunition of God, uh, the time that was given to ministry, uh, the hurt and the pain that they uh, bestowed. I remember my father going out in the streets and preaching and coming home, never getting the recognition that he desired, uh, uh, but uh, my mother would encourage him, uh, go back, continue to go. The cause that it takes, uh, do you know some people, uh, it has cost them their health, cost them things in life, losing. I have seen the losses. I have suffered some of the losses. Many that come before us have lost many things. Uh, Harriet Tubman cost her uh, to lead those into uh, uh, out of slavery. Uh, uh, it cost Malcolm X his life. It cost, uh, uh, it cost Martin Luther King his life. And it's so much uh, the cost that comes into giving your life to others, giving your life as a sacrifice unto God. Uh, do you know uh, that um, presenting your body as a living sacrifice, it is when we give our everything to God. I, I want you to stay with me here uh, because uh, many of us, we know about sacrifices. Uh, we know about sacrifices for our health. Uh, uh, if we want good health, we sacrifice in our exercise. If we want to be successful in this huge economy that continues to work and grind, uh, you must sacrifice your time. Uh, you must sacrifice your abilities and your education, everything uh, that you have uh, conquered in this society, uh, you must sacrifice it if you want to be successful. But here in scripture, uh, Paul is talking about God's kingdom life. Uh, if you uh, desire to live a life for God, it must be that you sacrifice your life unto him like never before. When you sacrifice your life, it may cost you 
family members cost you, friends they turn away, people will underhandedly uh, hurt you and abuse you just because you have rendered your life to God. Uh, those that were with you, that walked with you, some will leave. And uh, uh, as Paul said, if they uh, was with us, they wouldn't have never left us. And so you know when people leave, uh, uh, they were not there actually to stay. Their hearts was never with us, as the word of God says. But listen here, it does not stop the cost. Uh, that's why we never put our mouth on the people of God. We never uh, put our tongues on God's people because you never know the cost uh, that it costs them to do the will of God. I watched my father. I followed him wherever he went. When I was young, if he got up under a car, I got up under there with him. Uh, if he went fishing, I wanted to be wherever he was. And then he told me one day, I'm moving to Detroit for ministry. And Lord, I said, I got to go with him. I followed him. I followed him like Elisha followed Elijah. I served him like Elisha uh, served Elijah. And so I, I, I followed him and I knew the things that the cost that would cost him. I seen the things that he suffered. I seen the things that my uh, mom suffered through and I, I and many times I poured the hands on the uh, water of the hands of these prophets I, I served them and uh, walked with them but here now watch him as my father transitioned from this life to the next life uh, when he was on his bed I asked the nurse uh, for a basin of water and a towel <laughs> Why was this? Because uh, it was a service that I had to do. I felt in my heart. I washed his feet. Uh, I washed his feet and I kissed him as uh, he left and transitioned. My God, even though it hurt, uh, the cost that came with it, uh, I wanted to serve him even until he transitioned. Saints of God, we have lost many things. Uh, many things have left uh, 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 from us. Uh, some of us have suffered through health. Some of us have suffered people and suffered family. Uh, some of us have lost children and lost limbs and eyes. And oh, it's so much that we count up in the cost. But we know even though these things, they captivate us, they hurt us, they bring us to a place of grief, even though it is God that holds us up. It is the peace of God that gives us the understanding knowing that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. I was once lost, lost in my own thought process, lost in the streets, didn't know what a sacrifice was until I met God. I came to meet God in a jail cell in prison doing five to 25 years. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The cost that we come through. Uh, there I was in a cell and I bowed down in my knees because that's all I knew. And I said, if you be the God that my mother and father proclaim that you are, then come into my life and change me now. Well, I beckon to you and I represent to you now. You can ask God to come into your life right now, and he'll begin to change things in your life. It's not an overnight process, but it's a lifetime process. It's a walk in a lifetime of wilderness. It's a time where things are taken and things are snatched away from you, but still God holds you up. You wonder how your heart can be broken, but God 
God still has you here in a good mental state. You wonder how you can lose something so precious to you, but you still have the strength to raise your hand, still have the tears to tell God, I'll be with you and I won't turn away from you. Listen here. The word then in the chapter two with verse two, it says, be not conformed to this world. Well, my question to many of you is the world's forming you. Has it formed and shaped your ideas? Have this culture changed the way that you think and the way that you intake the word of God? The reason why Paul says be not conformed is because this world or systems of this world, uh, it has its own uh, culture. It has its own uh, language. It has its own music. It has its own influence. <laughs> and the reason why we have it so hard, children of God, uh, to walk with the great influence of God's kingdom is because we're living in a democracy and know nothing about a kingdom. I wish somebody would catch me here. How many of you have studied how a kingdom operates? How many of you know how a kingdom flourishes? Well, it's hard to walk in kingdom authority if you never know how a kingdom operates. God's kingdom, the kingdom of God has his own healing, has his own doctors and hospitals, it has his own economy and economic systems. The kingdom of God has come unto us. Not only is it in us, it establishes itself in our hearts. And when you want to be kingdom, not Christian, I'm talking about kingdom. The reason why I say not Christian, because anybody and everybody today now is professing to be a Christian, and they tell you that it's not a religion, but it's a lifestyle. But I beckon to you that it is a religion full of rules and religious acts. But kingdom is God's kingdom is love, joy, long-suffering kingdom. It doesn't see uh, dirt in you, but it sees the best in you. Kingdom calls out. Uh, what God has in you, and it does not crucify you. Uh, kingdom only rises in truth and righteousness. Uh, do you know that uh, God's uh, the, 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 the foundation of his throne, the Bible says, uh, is righteousness and justice. Uh, we're living in a time and a, and a, and a, and a, and a country of injustices. Uh, we see people being slaughtered in the stores, slaughtered on the streets, killing one another, diseases everywhere, uh, tornadoes and weather, droughts and famine. Uh, but here we are, kingdom people still standing. Uh, ain't no famine in the kingdom. Ain't no shortage in the kingdom. Uh, no, no. God makes a way out of no way. Don't you know that when you are in God, you cannot be broke or poor. You cannot be a pauper. Why? Because the king's reputation is on the line. That's why he said it's not for anything. I do it for my name's sake. He do it because of his reputation. And if his citizens are living poor, then that speaks bad for the king. I wish you helped me here. Because God has everything. The earth belongs to him in the fullness thereof. And they that walk there 
saying everything belongs to God. You got to be able to see God in everything. I see him in the moon when it rises up and comes down. I see him in the sun and the stars and the clouds. If you just look at everything and then you can see the Holy Spirit, it's like the wind. You may can't see it, but it's there. That is God. He is the sum total of everything because he created everything. I wish somebody would help me praise him today. I'm sacrificing my life to him. Even though it hurts, I'm giving it to you. Even though it's painful, I give you all that I am. Even though I've lost those that were important to me here, lost my mama at 45 years old, lost my brother when he was 55, lost my daddy. My God, even though those things seem to be taken away from you, from me, it seems you give me more strength because I'm going to tell you this, saints, every trial and situation that you go through gives you the power to become a witness uh, in that situation. Uh, if you come through cancer and God heals you, it gives you power to become a witness uh, to those that would need help in the time of trouble suffering from cancer. Uh, it's some of you that are going through things and you're asking God why. Why am I going? Oh, Holy Ghost, I don't know why you're taking me this way. And you're asking God why. Why am I suffering through these things? Well, you don't go through nothing that is just for you. For the trying of your faith. There it is, Bishop. It's the trying of your faith that brings you to a place of maturity. Uh, it brings you to a place that you believe God, even in the face of death. Uh, it defies the human mind that believes. Uh, even if the judge comes with a sentence, I believe God. Even though the doctor comes with a diagnosis, uh, I believe God. And that is right. We have to give everything to him. Your trials ain't just for you. Your trials is for every other person. When you come out your trial, you have a testimony. Do you know something that you suffered 20 years? I shared this with my brother yesterday. You can suffer some for 20 years and then God brings you out of it and delivers you from it. And you can be talking to somebody on the phone for 15 minutes and by your testimony, they get a deliverance. Why? Because you've come through the hardness of it and you can give counsel and power because you've had the experience. Uh, don't uh, try to run from your tests and trials, people of God. Become that living sacrifice. Uh, embrace the valleys that you go through. Uh, embrace the tests that you go through. Uh, embrace things that seem to be taken away from you. I know Mama may have been taken. I know children may have been taken, but if you get trust in God, know this, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And everything works to the good for them that love him and are called according to his purpose. We have to know and believe God through everything that we struggle through. Don't get a mindset that this world and this culture will give you today. No, no, people of God, we need the mind of God. How do we get the mind of God? Prayer and fasting. We need to pray more than ever before. And plagues are everywhere. Whether is tearing down things uh, uh, that man is destroying each other. Uh, uh, we see wars and rumors 
place of wars. Seems as if the earth is in travail, warring back and forth. This is the cause of man walking out of the way from God. Don't you walk with him, walk towards God. Keep pushing, asking God, help me in this time of trouble when you can't see your way out, then just have faith that God will bring you out. Continue to call on the name of the Lord. I remember my mother called on the name of the Lord. My father called on the name of the Lord. My bishop designate called on the name of the Lord. Uh, my bishop presiding high, calling on the name of the Lord. And so why should not I? I'm a follower of leadership. And I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. We must move past tearing each other apart, past looking down on one another. For what we have, we can share and bring each other up. We must do kingdom work in this time, people of God, to be a living sacrifice for the Lord our King. To be a living sacrifice is not easy. It is not because sacrifices cost. Sacrifices cost. To offer a thing cost. To give your life can cost relationships. Some family members to leave. People will never speak to you again. People are underhandedly go under and leave you. But God never breaks a promise. God is always integral in his promises. I beseech ye, brother, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice. If you don't know God today, you can present your body, present your mind, present your heart, your spirit to him. When you give it to God, you got to give everything to him. Give it all to him. Not just a piece, all. My mind, my heart, my soul, give it all to me. The process of change takes time, but you've got to start here by rendering yourself to God. You can say, Lord, I'm available now, but you got to mean it in your heart because God looks not on the outward thing, but he looks on the inward part, the heart of man. And some of us are so tired of the life that we've been living, looking for ways out, looking for another journey, asking God, why am I here? I challenge every one of you today to ask God, why do you have me here? What did you place me on this earth to do? Because whatever you place me on this earth to do, I'm willing to sacrifice myself to do your will. When you render your heart to God, he'll come in. He'll bold to you. He'll bold in you, with you. It's time to stop playing. It's time to stop going uh, the back way. It's time. Look at the times and the seasons, people of God. Look at it. We have never been in a place like this before. Of course, in our time, because there's nothing new up under the sun. But we know that these times are crucial. People leaving earth, diseases taking over left and right. But the kingdom of God 
is in our hearts. We have influenced people of God on this earth, but we must walk in the same authority that Jesus Christ walked in. We must be the representatives of the kingdom of the living God, which means we spread peace. We make peace. We bring good tidings. We bring healing. We walk in healing. You cannot give somebody something that you don't have. That's why we surrender our lives to God, because we want to be full of him, that we may help others. Saints of God is all about the connection of people. I know that people tell you, oh, don't hang around, don't go around sinners. Listen, if you love God and you're a child of God, the only way that sinner may ever know God is see or hear it through you. We have the power to win souls. And they telling us, don't go around them, don't do. Jesus went right in with the, with the publicans. He drank with them. He discussed politics with them. No, no. He walked in the authority of the kingdom to influence whether it be political, social, political, we have the kingdom of God in us and we must walk in it, in that authority. I thank God today for this small expert of the word and I pray that it hurt, it helps you because we need God today more than ever. Some of you need healing in your body, God touched the bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus. Some of us have broken marriages. Father, heal the marriages in the name of the Lord Jesus. Kingdom principles. Saints of God, we come to you today asking you, are you willing to be a living sacrifice? Are you willing to give it all up? for God, for life, for peace. He says, let this mind in you be in Christ Jesus. Don't let this world conform, this culture conform your thoughts to the pleasures of this world or system. But kingdom mind is conducive to God's kingdom. Peace, love, joy, long-suffering. And through that, we influence the earth. We change. But the earth waits. It awaits for the sons of God. We must rise, saints of God. We must do the work of the Father. For those that are lost, those that don't know where you're going today, we appeal to you, Jesus Christ, the Savior, that God will come into your life today, change you. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come to you now humbly. Those that are sick, touch their bodies, touch my body, God. For we need you more than ever. Touch those that may be suffering from coronavirus, the monkey pox. Father, in the name of Jesus, these judges, let them not touch your people. The blood on the posts, the blood that covers and protects in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, touch the heart of that one that is lost. It seems that there is no answer for today. Let them know, God, that you are the answer. That all things are in your hands. And if they commit their lives to you as a living sacrifice, that you will be their God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray today. Touch our children. Protect them, God. 
in the schools, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every demonic spirit that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We cancel the assignment right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.